Hello, hello! Welcome to another episode of History in the Dark. I am your host, Darkness the Curse. And before we begin, as always, thank you so much to my generous patrons, my British Rail critics, and of course, my underwater train finders. You are the reason why this content remains somewhat murderous, actually. Not really. And today, we're going to discuss, um, uh, employee safety video? What? But with the success of me talking about British Rail's PSA, whew, I decided to talk about, um, some other corporate videos. Not all of them, though, are meant for public consumption. This one today is one that was meant for their employees. This is Union Pacific's somewhat alarming internal safety video. Now, from the get-go, it seems weird for me to even be talking about this, because it's an internal safety video for a company. I mean, whether it's a railroad or not, Let's be fair, most of these go the same way. If you've ever had a job where you've had to sit down and watch a video, it's usually either one of two things. Hilarious corporate jargon about how wonderfully positive and amazing the company is, and how they are so happy to have you there, and how everything's gonna be great and wholesome and wonderful, and there's a whole bunch of actors who definitely actually don't work for the company, and they spill a bunch of human resources friendly nonsense at you. Or, it's literally just a video of some higher-up awkwardly reading a script, going over the various safety elements of the company, or things like that. The point is, these videos usually aren't very interesting. They are designed to fill a very specific purpose, which is inboarding of new employees. That's it. They're always geared for the company in question, they're almost always done on a very limited budget, and even if they do have a budget, the idea of making the company look good is right there from the start. It's dull. It's repetitive. They're almost always very, very, very similar, and they're usually not worth talking about. But for one thing, we do railroads a lot around here, as I'm sure most of you are well aware, and Union Pacific is, of course, one of the largest railroads that we can talk about. I bring them up often, not because I've actually talked about them directly outside of talking about some of their various locomotives, but to say Union Pacific is one of the most successful railroads in American history would be a massive and total unspeakable understatement. Like, Union Pacific is, for one thing, massive, and for two, astonishingly successful. They've been around for ages and still continue to be around now. It isn't just their territory that's massive either. They used to pride themselves on having massive locomotives. The big boy? Yeah, that was them. Done on purpose. And they had the heaviest locomotive ever, period. The entire railroad reeks of big chungus. So, them going extra? when it comes to even an internal movie, uh, isn't necessarily astounding, I suppose. They certainly would have the budget for that. This particular film was done at the East Yard in Los Angeles, and it stars a man by the name of Glenn Roper, who I couldn't find too much about, except that he was definitely a Union Pacific employee. He had been with the company for a long time and knew the ropes in and out when it came to himself. So utilizing an experienced veteran employee as the star of your internal film does make some logical sense. And the movie is actually done up in a way that's reasonably entertaining. Glenn is actually a pretty interesting guy. He reads his lines very well and keeps your attention. And as a safety video, well, it's mostly for yard workers, actually. The boots on the ground when it comes to railroads, the guys who are walking around the big heavy equipment. These dudes, especially back then, did a lot of crazy stuff to keep railroads moving. And it makes sense that Union Pacific would want to make sure that these guys are doing things in the safest possible way. But at some point during the making of this film, I swear they must have lost the plot, because I still can't believe the kind of stuff they have this poor old man do. Glenn doesn't look very young. In fact, he acknowledges he's not very young in the film. And they have a dummy in the film, so you'd think they'd have the dummy do the most dangerous stuff. And sometimes they do. Not always. At certain points during the movie, I swear it comes off as if it's Union Pacific trying desperately to get this poor guy killed so they won't have to pay him a pension when he eventually retires. Like, that's how it's coming off to me. I know times were different back then, and I know a lot of people say all oh, these younger generations are too soft, and I don't disagree, but yo, even for 1972, I... listen, because as part of the safety regiment, Glenn shows the 
right way to do things, and then he tends to show the wrong way. And the problem with showing the wrong way is you have to show the consequences of doing it the wrong way. The film actually does have a title though, called Getting Off on the Right Foot. A somewhat clever title, given a major part of the instruction is showing which foot to utilize when it comes to getting on and off moving rail cars. Take it from an old head who's been battered, bumped and bruised, just because he was a little bit careless. A little bit careless, that's like being a little bit pregnant. <laughs> and already we like Glenn. He's very funny. The first instruction is actually pretty simple. It's just showing how to get off a moving rail car. And don't jump off of it, because that would be a dumb idea. And eventually they show what happens when you do that wrong, and oh! Goodness! I mean, I'm glad they put some padding there for him, but that didn't look like very much padding, and that could have easily gone terribly. This whole thing is shot at a live rail yard. Again, the East Yard in LA. He could have easily stumbled and hit the rail cars. But on the other hand, I do have to commend Glenn for this whole thing, and being willing to actually do these ridiculous stunts just to illustrate a point to new railway workers. But also the fact that, again, Glenn is, in fact, a Union Pacific employee. And he's an older guy. The fact that he's still moving around doing this type of physical stuff is a testament to his grit. And I just want to acknowledge that kind of thing. It's just great to see an old dude who's still willing to do an honest day's work rather than sitting around complaining. The internet didn't exist in 1972. We couldn't just sit around and complain all the time, could we? Next up, Glenn shows us how to get on a moving rail car, which you think would be similar. It ain't. This is completely different. And of course he shows how to do this wrong and oh, oh, no, 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 what the? Dude, what? Glenn, Glenn, you almost lost your foot, literally. It went so far that it almost hit the wheel and possibly could have gotten dragged under it. I mean, that didn't happen. And I'm sure he meant to illustrate how bad it can go, but in a relatively safe way, because he was an experienced railroader. But still, like, I can't even count the number of ways this could have gone hideously wrong right here. And all in the name of showing safety. Things were not the same in 1972, is what I'm trying to say. Because you couldn't get away with this now. It's kind of the equivalent of showing the dangers of mishandling landmines by having someone step on a landmine, you know? But is it effective? I mean, yeah, I won't be getting on the railroad car in the wrong way now, because I enjoy keeping my foot. After this, Glenn has to show us how to properly ride the rail car, because yes, no one is safe in a railway yard, which actually is a testament I can get behind. Look, there's danger around every corner. You could die at any moment. The specific example this time, though, is switch chance, because some are closer to the tracks than others, and Glenn actually takes a hit from one while on a moving train. Ow! No, seriously, that looked like it really friggin' hurt! Like, he actually took that hit, too! I mean, that was not a gentle blow. The train doesn't have to be going very fast for that kind of impact to, well, hurt. It's metal! I mean, go ahead, just bang your elbow on something and see how that feels. Don't actually do that because I don't want to get sued, okay? That was a joke. The point is, it hurts. He also illustrates this point to safely keep a hold of the train because it could suddenly stop without you realizing it. And he demonstrates this very well by having the train stop suddenly and then falling on his face. He's really committed to his craft is where we're going with this. I also enjoy the next part how Glenn gets distracted by a few cute girls. It's like they already know that their mostly male workforce is going to get distracted by cute girls. I mean, they will, okay? I I'm a guy, I get it! Glenn again falls, and this time he slams into a station platform, and that couldn't have been pleasant. I mean, he absorbs the impact really well, but this is yet another thing that could have gone horrifically wrong just to make a safety film. Like, what is happening? Next time they start talking about the couplers on the trains, which, yeah, things can go really bad with these heavy-duty couplers in a lot of ways. First, Glenn takes another fall, because of course he does. It's 90% of what he does in this film. And then they attempt to run him over with the train. The whole point of that was to show that when you're in between two rail cars, you always want to make sure there's an easy way to get out of being in between two rail cars. Since, again, if they suddenly decide to move, you know, you want to step away. 
and not die. They also show why it's important not to put your hands inside the couplers that are slightly ajar. They had the good sense not to have Glenn himself do that. They use a bit of metal instead, though his hand was really close to it, so it could have also gone kind of bad. They show why it's important not to remove a blue flag, which was only put on and removed by car men, specifically to avoid killing the car men who's underneath the car. And they once again show the tremendous power of these couplers by crushing a punching bag in between two railroad cars. Which, well, I'm glad it wasn't Glenn. It's kind of where I'm at with it. The next portion of the film is actually about setting the brakes on the cars, whether they're moving or stationary. And fortunately, Glenn is not asked to do anything particularly suicidal in this part. But towards the end of it, they actually demonstrate brake safety by showing how um, not setting enough brakes can actually make a train crash, which is really hilarious because this was 1972. Trains still crash now because people don't set enough brakes on them. So, this really is actually a very important thing to stress with railway employees. Also, I kind of wonder, did they intentionally derail these boxcars for this bit? Or was there just coincidentally an accident in the yard the day they were filming and they just had a good moment? Like, I legitimately want to know this. I have no way of finding that out. I have very limited information on this film in general. They could have done it on purpose. Maybe those cars were meant to be scrapped. But still, like, this is going above and beyond. They literally derailed some cars just to show that that can happen if someone does a job, well, halfway. Next up, a solid demonstration of riding an open railway car. Glenn shows it's important to keep yourself stable, and they show what happens when you fall off. Not with Glenn this time, though, because occasionally they do actually use the dummy that they said they had. Is he really against using the dummy, though? Like, Glenn's been taking most of the hits so far? Next up, Glenn is walking on top of some boxcars and shows why you shouldn't jump in between trains. Because, well, your train can leave you behind. This is a bit more of an amusing bit, at least. Glenn doesn't have to do anything particularly life-threatening in this part. Beyond just walking on top of the railroad cars, that in itself is inherently dangerous, but, I mean, that was a part of the job back then. We're back to brakes all of a sudden, but this time it's about not placing your feet near the couplers and actually using the places where the feet are supposed to be because otherwise oh god ah, glenn glenn no, oh oh it's a, it's a fake like, oh, the film legitimately makes you think it's his foot actually it threw me off at first and to be honest at this point it wouldn't surprise me if glenn was like crush my foot crush it let them see what can happen glenn we, we can't do that it's not in the budget we, we can't pay your medical i'll walk it off this is america what does it being America have to do with your foot being legitimately crushed? Everything! We're moving away from cars now and onto the tracks. Don't slip on the tracks. For most people, it's don't walk on the tracks. But for railroad employees, it's don't slip on the tracks. Also, changing switches. It turns out, some people don't understand this, these old iron switches, they're old and iron. They're really heavy. Don't drop them on your hand or foot. That is going to hurt just so we're clear. Here's another nice long shot of a pretty lady, which actually has less to do with the film this time. Gotta love the 1970s hair, though. That's old school, isn't it? But now, uh, the film devolves into hand signals. Less danger this time, at least for Glenn, which, good, he deserves it. You've heard some chill time, Glenn. He walks us through all the various hand signals you're gonna use in the yard, but then shows an example of how useful those hand signals can be in certain situations. Like, Genius here, thinking he's gonna beat the train over the tracks, because God, people still do that, and Glenn having to stop the train suddenly, lest this poor moron get run over. And, uh, that's it. That's the whole film. The runtime's only about 25 minutes or so, that includes the credits, so it was, you know, fairly short, which most of these onboarding type safety films are. But I gotta admit, as crazy it is to see Glenn almost die, at least twice, this was a really effective movie. I mean, as far as corporate internal films go, it's way better than it has any right to be. Part of it is Glenn, not just him doing his own stunts, but also just him and himself. He's clearly worked for the railroad for a long time, knows his stuff, and is very charismatic as he explains why things are done in a certain way. Mostly the reason is so you don't get killed. 
Plus, it's shot well, it's not super drolly, it doesn't feel overly corporate in its delivery. It's not like, this is Union Pacific, and yes, we're the best railway ever, and we foster a healthy, growing, wonderful workplace that continues to support all kinds of people of many different backgrounds, blah, 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 every friggin' company says that. This film, on the other hand, is very, very down to earth. Were it not for the credits and the fact that you can see some of the locomotives, you wouldn't even necessarily know that this is a Union Pacific video, because it's done in such a way where it's like, we're about the safety, here's what you're gonna deal with on the job. And in that way, it doesn't come across as boring corporate jargon, rather than legitimate, now seriously, don't do this, kind of advice, which may have actually saved some new railway workers' lives on more than one occasion if they paid attention to this film. It legitimately is kind of an important thing to see if you're working on a railway. Some of the advice in the movie, despite the fact that certain methodologies have changed since this was made, are still legitimate. Like, there is still some advice to be found in this film that could be applied to a modern-day rail yard. So, you know what? As nuts as it is to watch a poor old man almost get murdered multiple times, in terms of effectiveness, in terms of delivering a legitimate safety video to their employees, Union Pacific gets a solid pass. And with that, a special thank you to all my underwater train finders. Thomas Ward, Some Dude 267 Orange Glass, Royal Hudson 2860, Lord Hoth 444, Benjamin Owens, Panzer Kitson 131-232, Mr. Black Rose, Josh Johnson, Metal for Life Guy, Anzac A1, Arthur Roy, DM Tribal Typhoon, Tommy Rossini, Lord Captain Von Thrust III, Joshua Long, Alaric Jaspers, Brian, Jack Carson's Railroad Videos, Major Klutz, Hayden DeGrow, Ohio Trucker One, and Master of None. Till next time, this is Darkness, and I bid you all a fond farewell.